in the Lord. So I've got some scriptures here that I'd like to share with you. I'm not sure if you saw my message earlier, but Pastor Emmanuel has joined us now anyway. And uh, we had a couple of baptisms in Darwin, so I'm sure Pastor Emmanuel will mention something about that later on. Praise the Lord. Okay, uh, so let's start in Acts chapter 17, uh, in verse 11. <clears throat> So we, we see a situation here in the book of Acts where uh, Paul uh, went throughout many parts of uh, the world there uh, preaching the gospel. And we know that he had opposition uh, in some places. Um, obviously, uh, some people received the word um, gladly, but there was also opposition. And uh, we find that there are a group of people here, a group of Jews that were um, in Berea. And uh, in verse 11, it says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Um, so they hadn't heard um, the gospel preached to them um, previously. Uh, when, when Paul and the saints came um, to this place and started telling them about uh, about Jesus, um, this was new. These were things that were new to them. Um, but what we what we see that's great about these people was that they searched the words daily, searched the scriptures daily, um, and they received what they were hearing with a readiness of mind. So they were they wanted to hear what was being preached, and they wanted to search the scriptures. And the thing is, uh, at that stage, they did not have the New Testament. Uh, the, the scriptures that Paul would have used would have been all the Old Testament scriptures about Jesus and about um, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit and so on. And, uh, and also, I guess, uh, what, what John the Baptist um, also um, was saying um, during his ministry as well would have been the things that could have been included. And uh, when we think about growing in the Lord, uh, it's just uh, fundamental that we have the right seed. So if we're, you know, if we think liken, um, the, I mean, the Bible talks about that and Jesus mentions that, the word of God being like a seed, um, we have to make sure that we actually have the right seed in our life. And, um, you know, and that continues to be the case um, through our walk in the Lord. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we search out things daily uh, whenever something, whenever we come across things that we uh, search them out. So uh, for a long time, we've been encouraged, and I'm sure uh, Pastor Emmanuel and others have encouraged you as well about the importance of knowing the word of God. And that, you know, there are lots of, uh, there's a lot of uh, counterfeits, there's a lot of falsehood and uh, false prophets and all these kinds of things that are out in the world. And it's not really possible to know everything, everything else that's being preached out there. Um, you could spend your whole life trying to learn about other religions and uh, philosophies and, and that sort of thing. But the, the best thing to do is, is to know what the word of God says so that uh, when, uh, when you uh, are presented with something, you can actually tell you know, whether it lines up with the word of God or not. So we'd be able to say that's scriptural, yes, that's scriptural, or no, that's not scriptural. Um, you know, and, and that's a fundamental part of our of one of being able to grow in the Lord. So uh, we in the fellowship, um, we 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 always talk about our our walk and our beliefs are founded on the Bible, on the Word of God, and uh, we need to continue to do that um, to remain um, healthy and growing in the Lord and being fruitful in the Lord. So we have a responsibility. We also don't want to, we are accountable to the Lord. Um, so we have to make sure that we can rightly divide the word of God um, and that the people we speak to, um, you know, there's encouragement in the word of God where 
I think Paul said to Timothy, you know, you need to know, study to show yourself approved. And, you know, if you know the doctrine, then you'll also save them that hear you or hear us. Uh, so that's important that we do that. So that's a good uh, example from in the book of Acts. Um, in, in Genesis chapter one, uh, it, it talks about um, in verse 11, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielded fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. Um, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And, you know, we can see that our, our wonderful creator is, is someone that, you know, he created everything. And uh, he created, um, you know, the, the seed and the plants and all these kinds of things. And, you know, that can also, we can think about those things um, spiritually as well. Um, so we need to believe in the creator, uh, not believe what science, so-called science um, would have us believe. But everything had its own seed in itself. And, um, you know, we don't believe in evolution. We believe in a creator um, who, who created us. And, uh, you know, the Bible talks about we have this seed, this word of God. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, uh, we see that the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So Adam uh, in Hebrew also means the, the man. Uh, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So um, we can see that, you know, how important it is to have um, the breath of this breath from God. You know, it's, I guess, a type of having the Holy Spirit. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And um, out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. So we see that there, that God, uh, you know, spiritual life is, is having a relationship with God. And uh, God, you know, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. We've received the Holy Spirit. And he, he put Adam in this garden. Again, you know, a place where there's all these uh, trees that are growing. It's a fruitful place. Uh, it's a paradise, really, okay? And uh, that's what our life can be like as well um, when we look to the Lord. And uh, in Genesis um, chapter 3, um, we see God's plan, eternal plan is unfolding in verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. So I know we're talking about seeds um, and descendants and that kind of a thing. Um, but we see here, you know, that Jesus uh, was foretelling about Jesus and Jesus defeating Satan, um, you know, the seed of the woman, um, you know, our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh um, descended from, from Adam and Eve. And, uh, you know, we, we see that, you know, there's this eternal battle that's being um, fought and uh, brothers and sisters, you and I are, are part of that, uh, of that battle and that victory um, in Jesus Christ. So let's go to Acts chapter 2 and establish uh, when the church started. So in Acts chapter 2, in uh, verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, you know, these are fundamentals um, as a Spirit-filled church, as as born again Christians, as the body of Christ, that we understand these things and that we can share them with others and say, this is, this is the, the truth. This is 
the work of the Lord. And, you know, this, this is uh, what we have to preach and not change. So let's go just uh, down to verse 38. So these are scriptures which would have been shared with us when we first came to the Lord. So we need to find out what was commanded and promised. Um, in Acts 2, verse 38, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, which is the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And uh, praise the Lord for that. Um, I've seen it in my own family as well. Um, exciting things happen uh, with uh, my, my two eldest sons. Uh, I've got three sons and eldest two um, have received the Holy Spirit and been baptized. Um, I was looking at the videos last night. Uh, my second son, Elijah, he received the Holy Spirit last year and he was baptized on the 3rd of October last year, about six months ago or thereabouts. And uh, my son, Theo, my eldest son, um, he's 11. Um, he received the Holy Spirit at a, a camp over in Cairns. And uh, he was baptized um, on the 22nd of April, about two weeks ago. Um, so praise the Lord for that. Um, we see the promise is for us. And I can praise the Lord. I've been in the Lord now 23 years. And I've been married in the Lord, have three uh, sons in the Lord. And uh, praise the Lord. You know, they're... We've brought them up knowing that they can receive the Holy Spirit. And uh, they've received the Holy Spirit. Two of them have received the Holy Spirit so far and uh, been baptized. Um, so we see uh, as we continue on in the Lord, growing in the Lord and uh, allowing the Lord to work in us, uh, we can see the promises of God being fulfilled in our very own lives as well. Um, that's, that's a wonderful, exciting thing um, that we can share. Uh, and with many other words, uh, did he testify and exhort saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Uh, so we need to be able to not be deceived and think that this is a wonderful world. Um, creation that God made is good, but it's been corrupted. And, uh, and because of, you know, the, the Bible says, because of, of, of lust, there's, there's corruption in the world and sin. Um, verse 41, then they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Um, so wonderful um, e uh, event that's recorded in history and uh, it's the beginning of the church and we're a continuation of that. Uh, in Luke chapter 11, uh, you don't have to, uh, we won't read it all, but um, in Luke chapter 11, verse 9, it says, and I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. So we need to uh, remember the simplicity of the gospel. Um, there may be people in, in, uh, that we come across in life that would um, try to sow seeds of doubt, try to discourage us or, or outright um, be you know, against what we're preaching and say, no, it's not true. And, uh, and yet Jesus just says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Uh, knock and it shall be opened unto you. And he goes on uh, in verse 13 to, to say, you know, if, if you know how to give good gifts unto your children, um, how much more will the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So simple things, uh, sorry, a straightforward message um, for us to hold on to. And obviously that also applies to other things that we ask for in life as well that are according to the will of God. Um, but certainly receiving the Holy Spirit is, is um, you know, preeminent in, in, you know, beginning our walk with the Lord. Let's go to uh, Romans chapter six. We're talking about um, this, this seed um, that uh, the word of God, um, and it talks about baptism here. And uh, in Romans chapter 6, verse 3, it says, Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, 
even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Um, and I, I think, look at the, the way he just, Paul describes this now as well. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, as a planting, um, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, but the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So we know if we plant a seed, it's, it's, it's dead, we, we bury it, and you cover that seed over, and you, you don't see that seed ever again, but what springs forth is new life. And, uh, you know, obviously we need to be baptized. It's, it's a burial of our old way of life, of our old man, as it says here. We're crucified with him. It's for the forgiveness of sins. And then also that watering the Holy Spirit then brings forth um, this new life uh, that we can walk in newness of life. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't, uh, we can't change. We can't, we can't uh, walk in the Spirit, obviously, if we don't have the Spirit. And uh, this is how we grow in the Lord. This is how we change. Um, there has to be a burial of the old person. And then we also need to receive the spirit of Christ. And it doesn't matter, obviously, which order that happens, but they, they're both essential that we are born of water and born of spirit. Uh, let's go to Isaiah chapter 61. So we are a living people. Uh, we're not, we, uh, you know, we've passed from death unto life. Uh, the Bible calls us living stones or lively stones even. Um, so let's have a look here at a prophecy about, uh, about Jesus. Uh, Isaiah chapter 61, it says in verse 1, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So brothers and sisters, um, you know, we were um, captives to sin. Um, the Bible says whatever, you're over, whatever overcomes you, you're, you're captive or a prisoner to that thing. And, uh, and, and, and what, what all mankind has in common is that we've sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we were um, prisoners in that sense um, because of sin. Um, verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them um, that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. For what reason? And he says that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So what, what amazing scriptures. We, we know Jesus, uh, when he was in the synagogue, and he, he found the place where this was written, and he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled. Uh, and let's see, we just see what, what, what those verses um, prophesied, was that Jesus was going to set us free. He was going to bind up our broken hearts, he was going to give us um, beauty for ashes. Our life was just, was nothing. He's, he's turned, given us something beautiful now. Um, the oil of joy for mourning. You know, oil makes your face to shine. It's, you know, re represents the Holy Spirit as well. Um, the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness, you know, putting on Christ, this new, new creation. And the, the reason for that, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that God might be glorified. So when we want to grow in the Lord, uh, we think about what God does for us. It's not for our own, not for ourselves. Um, it's, it's, it's because we've been bought with a price. Um, we've been bought with the precious blood of the lamb and, and, and we need to glorify the Lord in our life. Bible says to be fruitful. Um, in Psalms 34, verse 8, it says, O taste and see 
that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So that was Psalm 34, verse 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So that's what we encourage people to do um, that don't know the Lord. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And sometimes uh, we can stop tasting uh, even when we come to the Lord. Uh, if we uh, do not feed the inner man, if we're not reading, if we're not praying, if we're not fellowshipping, um, then we are depriving the inner man of that spiritual food. Uh, we, 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 we will become dry. And, uh, and you know what happens to a plant that becomes dry. Um, it's not a good outcome for that plant. Uh, it, can, it can literally uh, dry to the point of death. And uh, that's, uh, we're talking about eternal salvation here. So it's not something to, uh, it's not something that we, we should be playing games with. Okay, um, Hebrews chapter 10. So we, we understand these things. We've been, uh, we understand what happened when we received the Holy Spirit, when we were baptized. <clears throat> and uh, it, we need to continue on. Um, in verse um, 21, and having a high priest over the house of God, which is Jesus, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Uh, what's the profession of our, of our faith? You know, we, we're kings and priests. Uh, we, believe, we believe and we confess that we are Christians, that we believe in the Lord. So it says here, uh, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So fellowship's important. Um, I know that this whole coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic has created um, difficulties for millions of people around the world in, in, in their movement and their ability to get together. But, uh, you know, praise the Lord. Um, here we are on Zoom and uh, people are making a commitment to, um, you know, still fellowshipping, still take, hearing the word of God, giving testimonies to glorify the Lord, you know, um, taking communion, operating the spiritual gifts, um, having fellowship, well, even if it's over, you know, over the computer, um, you know, we're, we're, we're still uh, encouraging one another um, th uh, through that common faith that we have. And that's really important. So really, uh, if you look at, you know, what, what um, Hebrews 10, these verses is telling us is about making a commitment. Um, you know, if you want to grow, uh, you nurture, you nurture that plant, don't you? Um, you know, it's got to be in the right environment. You've got to, you've got to water it. You've got to feed it. Um, you've got to look, look, look it over for disease, all those kinds of things, you know, pests, uh, all those kinds of things you do. You're going to nurture that, that, that plant because it's precious to you. You don't want to see it die. You want to see it grow and thrive. And that's, that should be our spiritual life, our spiritual walk as well. And, we, we care for one another as well. That's, that's really important. Um, you know, we must never forget what the Lord says. You know that he, he says, I am the true vine um, and my father is the husbandman. So if we're connected in with the Lord, um, then we'll continue to live, continue to grow um, and we continue to have, you know, correction as well and, uh, and support and encouragement so that we, uh, we don't end up being something wild, but we end up being something that's um, pleasing to the Lord. Um, let's go to Psalm chapter one, to the very first Psalm. <clears throat> so it's a short one. Um, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. 
So in the last few verses we looked at in Hebrews, uh, the encouragement is to fellowship. Um, here we see fellowship, um, there also needs to be separation. So fellowship with the people of God and with, with the Father and the Son, that's communion, that's fellowship. But we also need to have separation from the ungodly, um, the unbelievers. Um, in verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Um, and he shall be like a tree. Remember, that we're talking about growing in the Lord now. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So you imagine a, a tree that is by the river has a continual supply of that water that it needs to live and it's just going to thrive. It's going to be green, evergreen. And, you know, that's, that's what it's like if we remove ourselves from the ungodly and we delight ourselves um, in the law of the Lord, in the things of God. And, uh, you know, this is the picture, the promise that God is giving, giving unto us through this psalm. The very first psalm, you know, the blessing in following the Lord and departing and having no fellowship with, with the ungodly. So if we want to be, uh, if we want to grow in the Lord, um, we, have to, we have to make our separation from the world. And that can be really hard. Some, it can be hard for a number of reasons. Um, you know, uh, I guess when you're young in particular, there's, there's this pressure, peer pressure. You want to be accepted. You don't want to fe be, feel that you're different or other people to mock you. Um, but when you realize uh, what God has done for you um, and you realize, you know, you, you realize that those things are not important, um, that the acceptance with God is a far greater joy than the acceptance of the world. And you can't, you can't have both. Um, you can't have both. Uh, so sometimes, um, sometimes when you definitely, when you are walking in the spirit, uh, the Bible talks about things like he will make even your uh, enemies to be at peace with you. Um, so he can create that environment for you. Um, but you must never, we must never forget that there is a difference. Um, you know, we, we're spirit filled, not because of our goodness, but because of God's mercy. Um, and because we were obedient to his, his commandment to be born again. Uh, we, we are different. We are separate. And uh, we need to maintain that if we want to be like this tree that's planted by the river. Uh, the warning uh, here also in the next verse is verse four. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. So, you know, the chaff, uh, when, you're, when you're threshing wheat and you're left with all that stuff that just blows away in the wind, that stuff just gets blown away and that's it. It's gone. Uh, we don't want to be like that. Okay. Um, there's no, uh, there's no, um, there's no restoration for that. Once you're at that stage, you're gone. So, you know, we, we want to be, we want to be um, the trees that's, um, that are planted by the rivers. Okay. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter eight. So we've talked about the seed, we've talked about fellowship, we've talked about separating ourselves from um, the ungodly. And uh, you'll see here the words of Jesus in red, and starting in verse 5. And uh, we have a part to play, brothers and sisters, in um, how fruitful we are. I know that um, what we receive is from the grace of God, absolutely. But once we've received that, the Bible says, do not receive the grace of God in vain. So it's, it's what, what do we do with the grace that's God give, that God has given unto us? So verse 5, a soul went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Verse 6, and some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. 
And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. So interestingly enough, I think everybody's got ears. So the, uh, the parable is uh, directed at everybody. Um, the problem is people don't want to hear uh, what Jesus has to say. Uh, but praise the Lord. Um, he's, um, through his mercy, he's granted uh, unto us repentance um, and a heart to want to hear these things and change. Um, so we'll just go down to verse 15 because of time. You can read that parable yourself. But if we go down to verse 15, we see that this ground, if you like, is our heart. What kind of a heart do we have? Do we, and, you know, in the very beginning when we started uh, this, I guess, this talk today, we looked at those, uh, those the people that were in Berea and they had a readiness of mind. Their, their mind and their heart was ready to, to see if this was true, what they, were, what they were hearing. And here Jesus is telling us this parable of the sower and the seed. In verse 15, he says, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So, so many things mentioned there are so powerful. Uh, if we have an honest and good heart, um, when, we, when, we, you know, when, we, when we're baptised, um, the outcome of that is that we have a clear conscience right? Because we know that our sins have been forgiven. Okay. We've been crucified with Christ. The blood of Jesus, okay, is, is, is what forgives sins. Okay. So we know that we have that clean slate and we receive the Holy Spirit and it changes us. It, uh, it, it, the scripture says he writes his laws in our hearts and in our minds. So we, we're a new creation, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So if we have now this, uh, this honest and good heart, when we receive this word, it's going to change us, okay? And it's going to um, bring forth abundantly. And that's, that's what God, so that he might be glorified as we've seen in our earlier verses in Isaiah. So we need to keep the word. It's not, if hearing it is, also, is, is keeping it. And we bring forth fruit with patience. So, um, you know, it's a very sad thing if you receive the truth and then after a short while or even a long while that you just throw it all away. Um, you decide, I no longer want to be a Christian. I no longer, um, I no longer want to fight this good fight. Um, so you've thrown it all away. Let's not be... Let's, let's not be uh, let's say what it is, you, if you do that, you throw everything away. Uh, and that's a total disaster. Um, so it's, it's really important that we do um, bring forth fruit with patience. We've got to be patient, but um, the promise is there that you're going to bring forth um, fruit if you're patient. If you're not patient, well, don't expect to have fruit. Um, Okay, so um, when I was researching this talk a while ago, um, we talked about this, the good ground being your heart. Uh, also, interestingly enough, on a natural level, when you buy like a plant and or you, you're a farmer and you're preparing the soil, um, they have a word for good soil. It's called loam, L-O-A-M. And uh, I guess people that, you know, um, work in nurseries and they prepare soil to sell to people or they prepare the ground in a farm, um, they basically say that you've got to have these different mixtures within the soil. So they talk about having some sand, like rough sand, coarse, coarse sand, some fine sand, then they have a little bit of clay, um, also some silt and some organic matter. So there's a mixture of these different things 
um, to make soil alone a good soil. Uh, it's, it's just a bit interesting. Um, so I guess applying that spiritually, um, you know, if you've got uh, a soil that's very sandy, um, it doesn't hold moisture. You know, it's like you pour water on it and then uh, very, very quickly that soil is dry and that plant will also be dry. So I guess if we're thinking about that soil again, being like our heart, you know, the good ground, um, you know, someone with a, is a, uh, has a good, honest and good heart. When we, when, we, when we are praying, when the Lord reveals things to us, when we are, um, you know, when, when, the word, when we read the word of God, what kind of, how, how much do we retain what we read? Um, how, much, how much of the prayers that we have do we allow to teach us and guide us? So, you know, is it you read the word of God and it's like comes in one ear and goes out the other ear? That's like a very sandy soil. You pour water on it and the water just runs straight through and it's like it had no effect on that soil or very short-term effect. So we need to um, make sure that uh, when, we, when we read the word of God, when uh, things are revealed unto us, that it has some deep impact on us. Um, now, at the other extreme, if you have, I'm sure you, you know that being in, I guess that in Umbingan where you've got the uh, Karabao, the border buffalo out there and, um, you know, you're tilling your fields, you know, you, 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 you're closer to dealing with soil than I am probably on a daily basis. And, uh, and I'm sure if you've got so, um, um, soil that's very, uh, a lot of clay in it, um, that, that um, water just stays there and it doesn't drain and you just got this bog and this really muddy soil. Um, and what happens is um, things can start to even stagnate and die in that as well. So I guess with, with uh, water, there needs to be some movement as well, like living water. There needs to be some movement um, you don't want that. Um, you don't want that word to just become stale. Where you think, "Oh yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, I've got it there, but it's it's just stuck there. But it doesn't, you know, it's not moving moving you in any way." Um, anyway, that's hope that makes sense to you. Um, Jeremiah chapter four. Yeah. Chapter four, just a few verses here. Um, if that will return on Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me. And if that will put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove. And thou shalt swear the Lord liveth in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness. And the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. So again, um, the Lord God uh, and his son Jesus, when he came, he, he talked about natural examples that people could understand. And we know when you farm land, uh, when you allow it to um, lie, what happens is it's, it, after a while, the land, the soil and the, uh, the earth becomes very hard and compact. And we know you've got to keep plowing. You've got to replow that land before you plant your new crop and so on. So that ground becomes hard. And when that ground becomes really, really hard, then it's like the seed can't even penetrate that soil anymore. Um, and even when you have water, um, fall on it, that water can just rush off the top of it and not actually be absorbed um, into the ground. So again, it's, you know, um, this, was, this was Jeremiah, a prophet of God, speaking to the people of God in the Old Testament and saying, you have to break up your fellow ground, okay, and don't sow among the thorns. So, you know, if you, know, if you think about uh, just on a natural level, why would you want to sow among the thorns? You know, you, you, you would use your seed. Seed is very precious. 
because that's your livelihood. That's what's going to bring you your, um, your, your future crop. And that's how you live and survive and make your money and so on. Um, well, this is something that's really precious is the word of God and, and you know, receiving the, the, the message from, from God. And uh, the encouragement is the same to us. We need to break up our fellow ground. So um, there are times in our life where through circumstances, maybe we might have been a bit bitter about things. Um, you know, something We might have been disappointed about something. And, you know, the constant encouragement is pray to the Lord to forgive one another. You know, pray to the Lord. Uh, Lord, I need you to, to change me. I need to, I know there's an area in my life, maybe it's, maybe it's your anger. Maybe you're a person that's easily angry. And, you know, the Lord's saying, hey, you know, you need some, you need more long suffering. You know, you need to, you need to be, uh, you know, exhibit more fruit of the spirit, pray more and all these things. Um, but, you know, if you've got this fellow ground, this, this hardness, um, that's, that's the pride. And, and that's the things that are going to prevent you from um, receiving the blessing from the Lord. Um, so that was an encouragement from the Old Testament. Um, I'll just find a scripture to finish on because of time. Um, How about Psalm 128? Just very quickly there. Psalm 128. Um, Blessed is every uh, one that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and that shall see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children, and peace upon Israel. So, as a blessing there, um, blessing for for your for you and your whole for your wife and your family. Um, you know, so um, growing in the Lord. Um, you know, the Lord tells us what we need to do. Uh, we need to be obedient. We need to be born again, and we need to fellowship. And uh, we need to constantly allow the Lord to work in our life, not, not, not have this fallow ground with something that lies idle, but we need to keep working on our salvation with um, fear and trembling. Um, and that's where the blessing lies, brothers and sisters. We know the Lord's returning soon. So um, thank you. Thank you for um, uh, listening to the word today. God bless.